There's an album this year that came out that is better than Birth of a New Day. I'm not kidding. This was extremely hard to boil down, but I did it. Five, well, actually six Vaporwave albums that have defined 2018 for me, and I believe are truly the best releases we've seen this year. I've curated my picks on a variety of factors that really make them the best in my eyes, from originality to quality, popularity to exposure, and ones that have just cooked up a really solid amount of discussion from a majority of people in the Vaporwave community. I've also recently done a countdown on my five picks for the most underrated releases of the year. I highly recommend checking that guy out as well when you're done with this video for some more releases you may have not heard of from the year, but with this list, I really want to showcase and dive into some of the killer whales we've seen this year get dropped. So let's get a little cozy, baby, and uh, me and you are going to see what made 2018 such a spectacular year for the vaporwave genre. So to start off at number 5, I'm actually going to go with two albums for this one. I couldn't bring in one without the other, as both really set the bar of their respective subgenres to a degree unsurprised by the experienced artists who crafted them. They're also similar in that both albums didn't present a totally new sound, but instead they focused on executing the existing sounds of their subgenres, taking what already sounds good and is universally liked by the listener and just doing them really damn good. Palm Mall Mars by Cat System Corp and Incubo by our boys Surfing, two albums that radiate dominance with each artist showcasing why they run their respective turfs, Corp with Mallsoft and Surfing with that Yacht Rock Vaporwave sound. Many people regard Deep Fantasy, which is Surfing's first album, to be one of the best Vaporwave albums ever made, and I can promise you that if you dig that album, if you like that style, you're gonna love Incubo. And personally, if I had to say, I do kind of like Incubo a little bit more than the greatness that is Deep Fantasy. This time around, Surfing puts a little more personality into their already great sound. Where Deep Fantasy had a universal glaze of muddy cruddiness over the entirety of the album, which did provide a sweet charm, there's no doubt about that, Incubo varies its textures from warm, crystal clear synths to crunchy bass lines of a midi lover's dream. I do tend to find the most impressive tracks practicing this fearless stride of instrumental overload coming out of the middle-ish of the album with songs like Only Right and Feel Strong for example. Check out Feel Strong, it's like a Bibio reincarnation, I totally loved it, probably my favorite song on the album. The end of the album does get a little lazy in my opinion, there's a bit of filler material that's thrown over tracks like a police siren sample that really doesn't need to be there, and a dude talking about vaporwave that goes on for minutes, also kind of unnecessary, I think it just, it just distracts us from the songs that are underneath which aren't really too expressive or experimental to begin with at that point in the album as that heavier, bolder, more instrumentally crammed vibe I think Surfing brings to the table with such ripeness is squeezed out in the earlier portion of the album. However, I don't think it's that big of a deal. The tracks at the end aren't horrible or anything like that. It's just when you compare them to the brilliant stuff towards the beginning of the album, I find the effort to dwindle out towards the end. Incubo, the elevator music of your dreams. Now where Incubo took the beloved yacht rock sound of Vaporwave and Deep Fantasy and just brought it more to life with jabs of personality, energy, and variation. Let's hop in our little spaceship and travel over to the Palm Mall Mars, where a similar thing was done with the mall soft genre, and to bettering its predecessor, the OG Palm Mall released back in 2014. Mall soft legend Cat System Corp welcomes you to an unparalleled top-notch shopping experience for your intergalactic travels. Mallsoft is one of my favorite subgenres of Vaporwave, as I really appreciate its upfront and direct mission of bringing you to a certain place in time, in this case a mall obviously, or any other large shopping center, and good Mallsoft in my opinion can be judged on how well an artist can bring that concept of a too good to be true shopping mall to life. How does the artist tweak and play with volumes and levels of sounds to really encapsulate you into a over-romanticized shopping haven. How do they separate the foreground of instruments with the background of shoppers and other well-known Mallsoft tropes and sound effects to generate this simulation in your mind, body, and soul? Well, with Palm Mall Mars, Corp showcases his status as a Mallsoft giant wonderfully with his control of atmospheric sound engineering, and not sitting too long on one sound compared to the other, where some albums inject way too much reverb and blanket the entire album with that over-the-top, overused, hazy smoke 
smoke screen filter. Corp goes in and out from subtle side chaining to stretched frequencies, really widening the entire stereo with everything we got going on here, which makes it all seem so much more grand. With Corp, we really feel like we're walking around the entire mall and seeing everything that's going on, instead of just like sitting in the corner of a mall and getting one specific sound from that specific spot. With Palm Mall Mars, he took everything everyone loved on the original Palm Mall and just made it wider, livelier, and more atmospheric a true climax of the times for the Mallsoft subgenre. At number four, I'm going with the return of the Vaporwave goddess herself, Luxury Elite, and her album Prism, released back in the summer of this year that presents a newer, higher tempo side of something we never really saw her do too much back in her earlier years. Lux Elite has had her fair share of Vaporwave glory with widely praised releases like Fantasy, with Love, World Class, and the forever classic Late Night Delight with St. Pepsi. With Prism, this was her return to the vaporwave genre after her last work back like two years ago, I think, so many were curious to see where she would go. Would she incorporate past success and just borrow old vibes and styles from earlier tracks that proved to be successful from years ago, or would she want to ditch a potentially fan servicey release and try something new, recreate herself into the vaporwave world? Well, I'm happy she made the decision of going in a different direction as Prism really is a breath of fresh air. Lux uses a variety of instruments on top of samples, painting new soundscapes and auras with notes instead of overly saturating an album with filters to merely do the job. For Prism's case, it feels like we're more closer to Lux Elite's intentions than ever before and her musical desires are amplified with tracks that ooze a feeling that she really put her heart and soul into making this thing different. It feels more significant, authentic, and something she spent a good amount of time making. The whole album has this 80s cop chase sound to it with jumpy synths and bass synths, constantly flooding tracks making you feel like you're always on the move. This album definitely has a consistent style from start to finish so I can see where some may get bored halfway through the album and find it repetitious and may just want to journey onto something else but for those who crave that outrun dreary synth pop style and can sit with it for a little while i would definitely travel into the universe that is prism buckle up because she's taking you for a ride with this thing at number three, we definitely got the most traditional vaporwave sounding album on this list, and that is 100 Mornings by Windows 96. 100 Mornings, ever since release, has been given the album of the year stamp by many, and that comes from its stellar attention to detail. From wacky melodies boasting a knack for adventure, Windows 96 drags us through nostalgia reimagined. Remember back in the day getting dragged to go shopping at Kohl's, and all you wanted to do was go back home and play X-Men 2 Clone Wars for the Sega Genesis? Let me tell you, someone in this alternate timeline you can do that my friend 100 mornings in a row as a matter of fact and you know maybe you're gonna watch saturday morning cartoons or go wiggle a link cable till it works so you can evolve your haunter into a gengar whatever it is that's up to you but just remember the world is yours as dr 96 paves the way for you with smooth transitional soundscapes lifting you up from whatever state you could possibly be in and placing you into this half awakened glaze with its warbly compositions windows 96 has been known to the Deliver, and this is just another release showcasing consistency as an evolving artist. The 2017 release Gradient Horizon was received with great reception as well, and this year's 100 Mornings is an even better tune-up from what Windows did last year. At times, I found the drums and crunchy bass lines on Gradient Horizon to not really fit well with the glistening, delicate flutes and synths it had driving it. Yeah, it created a nice line between sounds at times, but the periodic clashing of vastly different instrumental textures sort of drowns out the benefits each of them respectively had instead of working together. On 100 Mornings, the cooperation between instruments and sounds are really heartwarming. It's tamed, but it's not boring. It still breathes, it has a lot of punch, and I think will age pretty well for the future. At the runner-up spot for the album of the year, at number two, I'm going with my boy Georgie and his latest album, Slide. Now, where Slide might not be a literal vaporwave release, and is definitely a stretching departure from the genre, George's influence and desire to take what the genre has done for him and introduce it into a more pop side is definitely admirable. I feel like a lot of bigger artists from back in the day who have moved on to newer forms of musical expression, Skylar Spence and Vec are just perfect examples, they radiate this feeling that they sort of want to move on from their past, which is cool, and kind of have everyone forget about their previous music styles once loved so that they can develop a different audience for their newer sound. And nothing wrong with that, I always advocate change, I'm all about it, but it does feel like a lot of the audience that followed them for so long helped them get to where they were, they got left stranded and 
They just don't want the Vaporwave tag as an artist to tarnish their name anymore, like it's a bad thing or something. With George, however, he doesn't forget his roots, and we can see his attitude and energy established in the Vaporwave community translate over really well into a more mainstream sound, which he totally deserves to get somewhere with this. This guy is super talented, and if anyone deserves widespread recognition in the community, it is definitely this dude. He puts in the work, he's original, he's ambitious, he's cool. I mean, look at those goddamn sneakers. That's the kind of shit third grade pad would rock on the first day of school. Flexing with my Kaiba structure deck, ready to burn kids in kickball. So anyway, let me shut up and get into the actual music we got on the album. Slide's track list is incredible incredible in my opinion. I'm hooked on it from beginning to end as George creates such a dreamy landscape of everything possibly imaginable. After years of releases and tracks between Mirror Kisses and Esprit, he's bringing everything he's ever worked with and combining it into this spirit bomb of release. Moments of classic vaporwave entities floating around on the track list from time to time, guitars riddled with overdrive and keyboard leads that last way too long but somehow keep you hooked all the way through to the last little note. His whiny vocal leads on tracks like Dumb are fun as hell to listen to and once again provide an attitude we've come to love from George's take on his vaporwave chill wave blend of sound. We can really sense that he has complete control of the direction he wants to take his music in and has soaked up everything he possibly can from vaporwave and is spinning it back out into a more synth pop, mainstream-esque sound. George is easily our golden boy from the genre and I think his potential will go to good use. Expect George to make a heavy impact in 2019 as if he hasn't enough already this year. Fantano even reviewed this dude. I couldn't believe it when I saw that pop up. So happy for him and anyone who's looking to grab Slide, I recommend getting the vinyl. Not sure if it's still available. The second pressing I think looks gorgeous. It's this like blue and black variant. It's available at 100% Electronica, so go show the boy some love and check out what he's got over there. Keep killing it, George. We're all rooting for you. Okay, here it is. You're gonna kill me, but I'ma say what I gotta say. There is a new number one spot over at Dream Catalog. Birth of a New Day has been dethroned. The City Is My Friend by Remember is an album from early 2018 that has blown my mind upon release, and since then has set the standard so unbelievably high in regards to sound engineering from this side of the Vaporverse. Over at DC, we've seen some incredibly well-produced releases come out over the years. I don't even gotta tell you guys, we all know that. They really are the classic home for that deep, treacherous, fruitful sound of cyberpunk production that is impossible to resist. It's hard to envision something as powerful, innovative, alive, and dynamic as The City Is My Friend come out anytime soon. From the opening track alone, we see such a wide display of frequencies and outputs. Envisioning The City Is My Friend is like a color our eyes have never seen before. Hearing this thing kind of defies all physical boundaries of what we've come to expect with dreamscape cyberpunk style releases, if you want to call it that. Shockingly enough, from a label known for being the best in the business to make them. With a track list of of only six songs, Remember has awakened strange melodies in an open world of atmospheric bliss. With slowed down trap beats providing the ride to take you from start to finish, the city envisioned here is one of towering skyscrapers, slowly dancing in a warm breeze, far apart from one another, creating space and openness in a place that's supposed to be crammed and overcrowded. We've seen a lot of ambient sound produced over the years, but there is something about this one that makes us paint the most beautiful picture in our head. It's so angelic and colorful, it's almost hard to put in words what I feel or envision when going through a full listen of the album. It's difficult explaining the emotion I have for this thing. I really, really recommend heading over to Dream Catalog and dedicating some of your time out of your week to really allow yourself to soak in everything this album has to offer from start to finish and be prepared as your first listen will definitely be your best listen. This is a once in a lifetime release in my opinion, at least for now, and is an album I can seriously say, seriously, is a 10 out of 10. What will 2019 bring? I, I mean, for me personally, I'm hoping for a giant Helio statue in the middle of Times Square, but that's, that's just me. Cheers to everyone that has made this year a truly evolving time for the genre and the community. I cannot wait to see what comes out next. Much love, your boy. I'll see you next year. Pad Chennington.